So it's March 2020 now, and I wanted to talk about some of the trends that we're seeing for this year. I mean, the reality is we've seen a lot of the bikes which are already coming out for this year, and some of them are already on the market today. But I want to talk about just overall what the trends we're seeing in the electric bike market and what we might see from here. So this is specifically going to be directed towards 2020, but certainly a lot of these trends will carry over for years to come. So one of the big things that we're seeing is just more and more integration, smaller batteries, more integrated motors. And I think that this trend will continue, but at a certain point, we might start to see some diminishing returns in the existing battery technology. But we'll see more and more bikes on the market this year with integrated batteries and having the external battery is not as common, although it's certainly still common on some bikes, particularly like bikes that are uh, cargo bikes, for example, where maybe the aesthetics are not as important and actually having the utility of that standard size style battery makes a lot more sense. But the motors, we're seeing the motors become more powerful. For example, Bosch has released some new motors this year, or actually many new motors. Specifically, this Generation 4 motors has been a really big update for them, where they took what was previously the Generation 2 motors and they shrunk them down, they removed the reduction gear, they reduced the weight over 25%, and even some of the motors, like the speed motor, for example, they upped the torque rating on there from 63 to 75 newton meters of torque. And we're starting to see that with some other motor manufacturers as well, it's just putting more torque in the smaller motor and being able to really deliver this great performance in a smaller platform. And I think that just comes with just the experience of the companies working here, and they're able to do more and more with less, which is, uh, which is really exciting. We're also starting to see more and more of these niche products develop. So specifically, we're seeing a lot more cargo bikes. There's more and more bikes being developed in this space, where historically this was a very small niche market. It's starting to, become, to get a lot more interest now that commercial companies are getting into it. There's more and more families are choosing to leave the car at home and actually use a cargo bike instead of their car, which just really makes sense especially as the bikes are getting better and better and safer for these specific purposes. Some other trends in relation to the specific types of bikes that we're seeing, we're seeing more sport bikes, specifically road bikes, uh, very lightweight road bikes with all sorts of integration, and then uh, mountain bikes have developed on different levels, so now we're having very lightweight mountain bikes or more extreme mountain bikes. But in our shop, we specifically focused on commuter bikes and cargo bikes, uh, although we do some things in these kind of performance areas. Commuter bikes, we're seeing more and more bikes with belt drives, with internally geared hubs. And there's a lot of companies that I think they used to think like, okay, let's just take the most popular bikes that we have and add an electric motor to them. But I think the trend that we're seeing now, which makes a lot of sense, is instead of doing that, let's actually develop a bike from the ground up that's made to be electric, that's made to take advantage of some of these different comforts that you can utilize, like when you have the assist, like if you wanna be a bit more comfortable, you wanna sit more upright or have wider tires or have suspension, you can do that with the electric bike and you can take that weight penalty without hurting yourself too much. You know, If you had a bike with very wide tires and suspension and all this extra weight on it, you might find that it's difficult to pedal, but once you have assist, really not a big deal. I think overall, we're starting to see things go in the direction of having more and more quality. I think some of the cheaper stuff is starting to shake out a little bit. There's not as many people that are getting fooled by the early market and just buying this you know, really cheap stuff that's out there and then getting burnt later on because they find out it doesn't hold up or they can't support it. We're also starting to see more and more integration of what's called the Internet of Things. So you are seeing more connections with the smartphone, whether it's for navigation or connecting additional services like music or using your uh, cell phone, for example, to make phone calls. And we're seeing other manufacturers are using the smartphone to get additional data about your ride and connect other information, for example, like a heart rate monitor. That's something that we're seeing more and more of where you're starting to be able to get more fitness data out of the bike. And I think connecting all these things, we're moving in the direction of 
the bike's working really great for commuting, but also being able to transmit information and encourage you to exercise more and really get more out of the bike. Another trend that we've been behind for years and we're starting to see more and more manufacturers get behind is speed bikes, so 28 miles an hour. Uh, I specifically really like speed bikes because I can get around quickly. I really don't like to use a car very much, so I like to be able to get on a bike and get there quickly. Uh, that's, that's a big deal for me. I'm not riding as much for recreation, as much as I'd like to, but uh, for me, I have a pretty busy life and I want to get somewhere um, in a timely fashion. And I find having a bike that can go a bit faster, if I have to ride with traffic, I feel safer. And I think overall, we're going to start to see more and more bikes come out on the market with these faster motors. Because, uh, you know, if you're replacing a car with a bike, having that ability to go a bit faster at times can be really helpful. More and more, we're starting to see these internal hubs with electronic shifting. Now, Shimano has a, a couple of different options with the internal hub and the electronic shifting. They even have the option to do fully automatic shifting. We also see many bikes with the roll-off internal hub with electronic shifting. But I think one trend that we'll start to see more in the future is the Enviolo hub with automatic shifting. This year, we'll see one bike, but I think in the future, we'll see more that have the fully automatic shifting, so you really don't have to fuss with it at all. And that particular transmission pairs really well with that automatic shifting. And the last thing I wanna talk about is price. So we're starting to see some shifts in price. You know, there's more bikes actually that are coming in the high-end market or premium sector, I guess you can say, because I think people, as they start to ride these bikes a bit more, they can realize that they have more of an appetite for a higher quality bike and the manufacturers are starting to satisfy that by bringing bikes that have higher quality components and more features to them, which generally comes along with the higher price tag. But there are also some bikes or more bikes coming into the market that are high quality and lower priced as well. So it is a little bit easier these days to get a higher quality bike at a lower price, which I really appreciate because from my side, I really don't want to compromise on quality in my shop. So I generally found that I'm not able to offer too many bikes at this low price point, but more and more the manufacturers are starting to put out their bikes at a bit of a lower price. And I guess it probably also to some extent the economies of scale as the market grows the manufacturers are able to provide a little bit lower price because they're able to be a bit more efficient there. Well, I think that's about all that I want to cover today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear from you what trends that you're seeing or what you're most excited about for 2020 electric bikes. Just leave them in the comments below and um, you know, let's, uh, let's talk about it. I look forward to seeing you in a future video and well, see you soon.